Uh, hello, everybody. Um, thank you for being here. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to just ask your, uh, like, raise your hand. Or if you sit in the front, please just stop, start talking loud. Um, and unless it will become too disturbing, I think that's totally fine, and it won't be a problem. Or you can also put it in Slido if if you want to be anonymous. We can also do that, yeah, uh, simultaneously. Yeah. Yeah. So, this is about ensemble programming, also known as mob programming. Who of you has already heard about mob programming before? Thank you. And and who of you has maybe practiced it before? <laughs> awesome, so nice. So we do have some people who already know it. That's great. Um, that's a start. Um, so ensemble programming is this thing that starts feeling really slow, and then it gets it really speeds up as the team gets better. In a, in a ensemble program, what we are doing is we are working on the same code at the same time. We we are solving as a group with many people. We are solving the same problem at the same computer. And this works uh, as seen on the picture, sitting in the same room, but it also works even remotely. Yeah? So there are several ways how people do this, and people do this successfully. It, it sort of, it's, it's a fun way to work. It, it can also, if the team is good, it can be very efficient. And it, it, make, it takes a lot of pressure, uh, it makes a lot of pressure for doing a high quality sort of thing, yeah? A high quality code. Um, I, I, I come from very, like, my background is very open source and async. That's where I spend most of my life working, where it takes one month to review some PR. So for me, ensemble programming is the opposite of that. It's like the best way to create a team and maximize the flow when everybody's on the same screen working at the same time. That's why I love ensemble programming for maximum flow. Yeah. Exactly, so we are, we are eliminating all the wait time. What do you think? Why would some people do something this stupid and pay five times the, the money for the same work? <laughs> do you have any opinions on that? Please. Uh. Uh, you don't need code reviews later, you just have it on the fly. So you actually save some time at least. Very maybe, maybe, good, yeah. Maybe not uh, five times the time, but that's something. Yes, so with this group, I think they have sort of like three code reviews going on at the same, at the same time, yeah. And the, feed, and the feedback is coming immediately and you're building the feedback as it's coming in, yeah. Very good. Is there maybe another opinion on why, why we want, would be like to why we would want to do something like this. Yes, please. So different ideas can be incorporated directly. So all the experience yeah. of all people can come together directly. Exactly. Maybe different people have different ideas or different uh, or, or are an expert in a different field and they have bring it on, on a different level of knowledge that can be incorporated into the solution. Please. Um, related to that also, um, there might be two or three different ways of doing the same thing, and you might want to talk about together the pros and cons of each approach, and then choose the one which is the most appropriate in that moment. Or maybe try them all. That too. <laughs> or maybe try <laughs> See them which all, one yeah. breaks. <laughs> yeah. Yes, exactly. So, we, so, so we, we, we create a shared understanding of how we are building things like how we make design decisions and how we write code. Maybe different teams have different sorts of, of, of guidelines in this. And working as a mob, we can align our understanding how, how we want to do that. Like, what do you mean? We already have a knowledge base of like 100 pages that shows our common understanding there. I read it every day. Come on, nobody <laughs> reads that. Nobody <laughs> reads that. Um, if requirements are unclear, that gets exposed quickly. Yeah. And sometimes you have, have a client in your mob as well. So you get client review at, at the same time. Yeah. So it's a great way to get junior developers started on larger projects. Yeah, I completely agree. I have not seen any way, uh, uh, any technique working better for onboarding new junior people 
other than mob programming. It's, it's really the best way. I think any other comments? Uh, one quick. You maybe don't need Stack Overflow that much because somebody in the room knows the answer. <laughs> maybe not that much, but maybe you still want to use it if, if, if nobody knows the answer. Or maybe you use Google or ChatGPT or whatever. Yeah, Works and then already for, everybody in the room yeah. knows the answer, not just the person who Googled it. Because <laughs> everybody Googled it. And, and the interesting thing is when, 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 when you're working uh, and, and when you're currently typing and, and, and figuring something out, maybe some, somebody in the mob is already starting the research. And as you're getting there, you already have the answer then. It it's might be a little bit sooner. I can just pause for a moment. Uh, they need to record it. <laughs> um, it. I can imagine that it's a more efficient way to um, uh, I can imagine that it's a more efficient way of um, spreading uh, the development culture. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we heard earlier that culture beats uh, policy every day. Very good, thank you. Yeah, I think there was one more hand there. Uh, we can, that could be the last comment, maybe. Um, yeah, so that to get everybody familiar with the solution, so for future work, everyone's on the same page of like mm. why this bit of code is there or what these lines mean, because everyone helped to make the solution. Yeah, I agree. So. It, it seems like ensemble programming uh, works pretty well for some teams, maybe not for other teams, but it, 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 it has happened to work out pretty well. And that's why we would like to actually try that. And we want to be one big, one big ensemble. And for that, I, would, I, I, I need you all at least uh, come, come further to, to the front seats. So I, I need some people filling the seats in the front. So please stand up now. They are some Everybody seats stand actually. up. Everybody stand yeah, up, please. Also row zero here. And, and, and take, 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 take some seats here, yeah? Don't, don't worry, it, it will be fine. Don't, don't, no, no need to be afraid. <laughs> yeah. We also can yeah. use the row zero here. They're right in the front. There's also <laughs> if you are very cura courageous, also take a seat in the, in the front row. <laughs> Otherwise, we will just uh, like you, use people whoever are here. They um, have a few seats right in the front row. Yeah, so, so okay. it, would be awesome if you if you have the courage to come in the, in the front too. Would be awesome. Thank you. So, the way this works, first of all, as a principal, um, we we want to be very patient with each other. We want to be kind. We will treat each other with consideration and respect. And it is perfectly fine to not know something or to do something wrong. It's perfectly fine to make mistakes here, OK? We are not laughing at anybody, and we will slow down for even the slowest person. So we are just here to learn, and we want to support each other. That's, that's a principle. That's the main principle. Um, and the way this will work, um, we will be standing, like three people are standing now. So there will be a person talking into the mic on this side. The person typing, like I'm typing now, and where Adi's standing will be the next person. This person will be already getting used to the stage, and in five minutes, we will change. This will be, the person standing here will become the typist. Yeah. I will start speaking, and then Greg will sit down. That's how we're going to do it. But the next person needs, needs to also be able to see the screen. So um, if, if, if you want to stand some, somewhere there, maybe, so you can see the screen, that might, might be better. Um, and this is the first part. We're only going to do it for one hour, no more. Yeah. <laughs> and there'll be a second part. We're going to do small ensembles in the second part, smaller, and they'll be facilitated. Um, OK. Before that, who wants to be the, the third person? 
I won't be the third one. Um, so. <laughs> so yeah, actually, we, we will start just grabbing people from the first row. Okay. So. And <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, just so like in circus. Hi, hi, hi Felix. <laughs> You could so, yeah. Felix, you would be the first person um, talking. So you would actually come, come, come to my place, yeah. And then you would be the first person typing. Thomas, hi Thomas. Hi. Please, please stand up. Okay. Um, and and can can you please come around to the left side? And okay. now. Uh, I would I would like to ask you to to keep rotating if if that's possible yeah to 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 fill in the seats hmm. <laughs> there there's a laptop okay. yeah awesome so we want to keep rotating yeah when when every 5 minutes we will be rotating a different person will be typing a different person will be talking and we need to rotate the seats okay so so more people keep coming um when you are typing, you are on the keyboard, and, but you're not supposed to make any decision or think too much. I mean, yes, of course, you have to think, <laughs> uh, because you will be typing, and typing is not that easy. But the person that is talking will make the decisions. The person that is talking has the final say of what we are going to do. And maybe the person that is talking has no idea what we should do next. Maybe they, they are completely overwhelmed with this exercise. <laughs> <laughs> might, might happen. Then that's, that's totally fine. That's totally fine. If a person talking doesn't have any idea, maybe just ask the ensemble. Hey, maybe anybody has an idea? And then maybe somebody raises a hand, and then, and then we have an idea. And then we can try that. And if you sit here in the ensemble and you have an idea, just raise your hand. Maybe yeah. the navigator will ask you, maybe not. It's up to them to choose, you know? But just, if you have an idea, just raise your hand. It'd be nice to see. Yeah. Do you have any questions regarding this <laughs> process? <laughs> yes, please. Uh, can you bring the mic to him, please? I mean, not a question, but I would just like to point out it might be a little chaos for everyone to keep shifting the seats. So maybe they can just get up yes. on their own seats and then come to the stage uh, directly rather than shifting the seats. Yes, just it, it might become solution. chaos, and we will see how it turns out, and then maybe we will do some continuous improvement in our process <laughs> and, wreck, and wreck this out. Yeah. A Python joke in there. Good one. <laughs> cool. I have a question. Yes. What do, what do I need to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody has an idea. <laughs> <laughs> yep, so we, I have a task list, <laughs> of course. Um, we have an exercise, and I will read the description of the exercise here. So the title of our tutorial is Data Validation with Pydantic. So there's a bit of data. We need to read the data from a CSV, which is a normal data science task. And to check the data is valid, and then return a list of pedantic typed objects of the valid entries in that file. This data is about houses. So we have ID, we have columns like ID, street, year the house was built, number of fireplaces in the house. That's very important when I buy a house, how many fireplaces it has, you know, the quality of the fireplaces, first floor square feet, and second floor square feet. And there's some constraints here. That ID has to be an integer. Street column has to be the string. The house has to be between 1700 and 1900. We don't want any of these new build houses. <laughs> the first floor is at least one third of the second floor, so it's a bit like this, or <laughs> like it's a reasonable house. And the four fire fireplace quality has to be part of the, this enum. Excellent, good, okay. I don't know what TA means, but <laughs> TA, <laughs> fair and poor. And there's some bonus questions as well in the end. So. We're going to use this uh, programming environment called gitpod.io, which is very easy to, set, to, set, to start, just a browser-based IDE. Um, yeah, which already has a task list in it. So this is a task list that we will be following. And there's one more component, the mob timer. This will, timer will buzz every five minutes and tell us to switch. So I'm just going to start it now. Let's start. Should we, should we start? 
Yes, maybe let's let's get our poker to the mic and our typist to the keyboard. Okay. Yes. yes. A round of Yeah. Let's um, first get used to uh, uh, again, how no. to use it. Which one was it already? For the the, if you use three fingers to slide <laughs> to, the, to the other side. <laughs> ah. Yep. Yes. And if you click start turn. Okay. And now I got Then I yep. go back to this. Okay. That was my question. What was the ID? Okay. Okay. First of all, let's look at the task list. <laughs> um, okay. Does this mean this writing test is already written? Can we can we look that up where that is? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah that, I think here. Yeah, on the side. Yeah, validate. Uh -huh. Okay, this is validate, and then we have test validate. Can you look into mm -hmm. the test validate? Okay, so okay, here we see. Okay, so so these are already done. Okay, can we go back to the task list? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could we run the test first? Okay. Yeah, I think it just ran already, but we can. Yes, there is something red in the bottom. Do you see what it what it reads? Uh, yeah. So it says we we have a one type error. So we have we have, we just got a non type which has no length, which is obviously bad. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> can we see which line it is? Seven. Okay. So we are trying to get one thousand four hundred sixty rows. Uh, out of this CSV. So first of all, we have to read the CSV, I think. And the CSV. Oh, no, we, we're reading it. Yeah. And it looks like we have to check to read CSV letters because it seems to be not returning anything. Yes, exactly. So uh, go to the yeah, definition. Yes, we are. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so any suggestions on how we should read the CSV? Uh, yeah, there's a raised hand over there. Uh, first by parameterizing the file that we want to read. Okay, let's. <laughs> yeah, 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 up front here. From the read CSV function. We might want to check uh, what the return type is likely to be. Maybe it's it looks like a panda state of frame, but maybe it's deceptive. So um, yeah, le le that's a good ar argument. Yeah, let's see what we're trying to get here uh, in the second test. It looks like we just some sort of we're, yeah. Uh, I think there was something in the task list what the return type might be. That's a good. Good idea. <laughs> Let's see. Um, uh, we, we start from, from the top to the bottom. So and in line two, there is this one row. It already has a check mark because it's already done. Yeah, it's and it's then we are now in, currently we are in line three, and we want to walk, walk, uh, work our way to the bottom or line by line. OK. Yeah, so it, it seems we're, as anyone has an idea what we're trying to create here? <laughs> yeah. uh, we have to let the test pass. That's the second task. So at the moment, the test is failing, and we have to make sure it passes anyway. Uh, I mean more in the sense of which data type we want to get. Yeah, right here. Uh, to me, it looked very like we want to return a pandas data frame. Uh, yeah, where, where do you see that? <laughs> well, in the in line 12, it uses df.columns.values, which I'll, would work on a pandas data frame. Okay, so, so that's at least an option. But I mean, there's other <laughs> libraries that could also mm -hmm. be the df uh, with this value. Could we take a look at the imports in the files if maybe there's already a specification? Uh, yeah, we can look into the requirements in our requirements txt. Ah, yeah. seems to be pandas. Okay, <laughs> let's let's try to get get a pandas uh, data frame out of there. So, 
uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, import pandas and let's just try to write the read CSV method. Uh, what should the imports be to our read CSV method? Anyone has an idea? Yeah? The file to the, to the, uh, the path to the file? Okay, then let's add a variable for the path. And let's, yeah, add, uh, yeah, let's import pandas as PD, <laughs> as we usually do. And yeah, you're in the front. Yeah, I would suggest not to, I would not change the signature of this function because this would make the tests fail, I think. So we should stick with the signature, but rather may make a constant in the, in the file or somewhere. Okay. What was that sound? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah should we switch around? Uh, where do I go? Oh. Uh, sorry. Um, I you maybe you heard the sound, yeah. and the sound means that we want to rotate. So whoever was sitting here, I think that's you. Welcome, Simon. Um, you will be the next uh, person typing. So I, I would like to you uh, like take some seat. I don't know, maybe maybe further in in the back. You will become <laughs> okay. the next person talking. All right. And you will be the next person typing. And that's, and that's the way we are. Round of applause, please, for the people. <laughs> Thank you. And also, what is important when we rotate, we want to keep working on the intent of the previous, uh, of, of the previous talker. So whatever he was doing and deciding, we want to keep doing that. So we don't want, want, want to shift focus every rotation, right? We want to keep doing what we are doing now. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, that's a very good idea. We want to start the timer. So can you please open up that window and click on start turn? And then you can go back to the, yeah. thank you. Uh, I had a question actually. You said, so you wanted to keep the, can talk to ah, yeah. you said you wanted to keep the signature as it is. Um, I actually don't work as a data scientist, but DevOps, and I like dependency injection and maintainable code. And I wonder why do you want this to be static? Maybe I don't see something. Uh, no, I would just like to stick to the task. The task is to make the first test pass and not to adjust it. And that first test uses the read CSV function without any parameter. Okay. That's the only intention. I'm not strongly opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so um, I will keep this advice. And then, so we are not changing the signature. Please remove my beautiful CSV pass. Thank you. And um, now we can go back to test validates and set it, so uh, just a static <laughs> path, I guess. Um, um. A quick suggestion, um, we are Python, we can do both. We can just make it a standard uh, valued, uh, a default valued parameter. <laughs> True story. <laughs> <laughs> Can someone tell us the path? Actually, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, great. <laughs> Question, is a test running every time we make a change here? Seems so. Yes, yeah. yes we, we, we are using something called PyTestWatch, and every time we change a file, it runs the tests. OK, so mm -hmm, thank you. So we see it's still failing. We still have no length. Of course, we don't get the data somehow. So we need to change the, uh, here's a read, CSV method. And we want to actually with open of PD read. I never use pandas. Thank you. <laughs> uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. huh. Do you need some parameters for CSV here, or just the default ones? Okay. Mm-hmm. And now. Yeah, yeah, return. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, like we always celebrate green bar. Like this is always <laughs> number one rule. <laughs> yes. Uh, so next one is unskip the failing test for column names. Uh, 
Uh, just a second, can we stick with the one before? Mm. Um, we are creating a new code base. Code base. It would be really cool if you start with type ins right away. <laughs> please. <laughs> like it, yeah. So, so please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On what we, do we return? Can we say that it's a pandas uh, data frame? Or? <laughs> ah, okay. Yes, we can. Uh, with that picky, <laughs> who is for uh, a string or for a path? So who is for a path here? <laughs> it's not enough. <laughs> string is good. <laughs> OK, good. Next, OK, so yeah, we were testing the columns. I saw them, and keeps failing just for columns. Name. OK, oh. three fingers, I heard. Yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh -huh. Okay, then we are failing. Okay. Oh. And what is the next one? So after unskipping on the task list, what does it uh -huh. say? Do we need to fix it as well? Make the test pass, yes. So we need to fix it. <laughs> So, uh, mm -hmm. so we need to check the list of items. Um, sure. So to me, it looks like we are loading too many uh, columns. So we get more columns than, than we expect. Say by the gong, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we need one more person. You're the typist. Uh, <laughs> I mean, whoever wants to skip it can also skip it. That's okay. Uh, and yeah. it's a question. No, no, you need one more person. Yeah, yeah there's other uh, person. Think we don't. I think we have. You're gonna be next, right? Yeah, she's gonna. Yeah, be. yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we have a person. But if if somebody really wants, please come here and sit somewhere in the front, and then you will be able to do it. Yeah. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I think awesome. Ready. So, Let's so please start, start the timer time. and then go back to the. Yeah, okay. I think so. I agree with you. I think it looks like we return too much data. So I would look into how we could um, drop those columns or maybe <coughs> prevent to read them in the first place. Does anybody know about an argument to only read a subset of columns in CSV? Um, want to pause here now. The way the talker is talking right now is very nice. It's talking on the level of intention. And then the typist, maybe, does the typist know how to do this? Do you know how to do this? Yes. So, yeah, the typist <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Just yeah. Like, when you tell the driver, take me to BCC, they take you there. OK. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe we should take the list of those um, columns. <laughs> and save it somewhere as a constant in this validate.py file. And um, I just like to point out something. So this is like, it's just a subset of uh, the uh, complete data frame that we want. So maybe we can just check for subset rather than checking for yeah, to me, in the test, it looks like we have extra items in the left set. So. I assume that we just dropped them. Do I need to save? Uh, if you have more questions, you can also put it on the slider. If you and sc uh, scroll some down, some people can raise hands. In the output, I think. Um, you could already. Yeah, it passes. <laughs> you could already um, drop, or you can already select for the columns while reading the CSV. Can you do that? How, how is it possible? Just adding the keyword argument columns equals and then the list. I think okay. it's called use calls. Use calls, or use calls. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> use calls. Um, yeah, I think setting columns overrides the columns they're reading. Yes. Yeah, so, I just want to say that we are doing TDD really well right now. We're doing refactoring on green. 
So our tests are green, and now we're improving our code. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it passed. Awesome. OK, let's look at the next task. OK, we should create the data object from, the dict, from a dict. So let's check out this test, the test create valid house. Uh, three fingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so there is the function create house, and we already have the dict. And can we look at the test as well? Trying. <laughs> oh. Okay. Um, what happens? So to me, it looks like the house is already created. What is yes, the task? What is house? It's coming from validate. Ah. <laughs> Can we look at the task once again? Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, so we should add new um, checks to this task. To this. Is, is this done? I would say we have read it, and we, have saw, we saw that it only tests for one of the properties. So we should uh, add another assert which checks the ID field for the value one. And now I would say we go to the house uh, class definition and add the field here as well. And if I remember correctly, it is uh, an integer as well. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I think we can already check this task off. Oh, yeah, okay, we were ahead of ourselves a bit. <laughs> one by one, add more tests for each field. Okay, let's add all the fields. And switch. Okay. As we're switching, I have a piece of advice for the navigator. When you see people raise their hands, you don't have to hear them. It's only if you want to, you can like ask them to speak. You know, it's all for you, for you now. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there are three more fields to add. So that's. So I can stop here. Yes, we, we, we could make three assertions first in, in the test validate. Mm -hmm. So that would be house.street. With a capital sys equal equal sesame. Mm -hmm. uh, ah. yeah. And we could we could uh, make that test pass first. Okay. That gets us more applause. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, first, then now first floor, what is, what was it, was it square feet? Yes. I just copied from square, yeah. before. And that looks like an integer, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh gosh, how was the, uh, oh yeah, thank you. Hmm, <laughs> mm. we have a problem here. Oh gosh, because it's not a. Yeah. Uh, Maybe check the task list. Okay. Ah, not oh, the everything. fireplaces okay. and fireplace Q. Okay, so these two not. Wait. Let's to, what's the fireplace in the in the example house? Uh, fireplace is zero. Fireplace quality none. Okay. Mm. 
That's an integer what? Okay. And assert house.fireplace QU. And I would recommend here to use the is none. Mm -hmm. any, any other opinions on that? <laughs> <laughs> and I have no idea what the data type of the fireplace quality should be. Oh, here's, here's an, a suggestion. Oh, can, can I get your suggestion, please? I think the intro said some strings, some um, enum strings. Enum strings, okay, great. Uh, any second opinion? Yeah, or here was one at the front. Optional string, I would use optional string for now because they don't say anything about... Um, it's, it's optional with a capital O. Validation. Was it optional round bracket, square bracket, square bracket str? Uh, can you check the task again? Because oh, yes, I think please. in the introduction it said somewhere that it's a, um, an enum set. Okay. Where's, the, where's the introduction? Like the enum sets come later. Let's just do optional string for now. Yeah, <laughs> let's. Yeah. Yeah. My, my task list. Task, task list Here, live, live we, we have lots of. This, this creates room for debate. Uh, can we hear Fabian, please? And then. No, I just want to mention that uh, since 3.10, you can use the pi parameter to make either none or string, which I really love, and yes, it saves yes, me so can. much work. Yes, we can, but a, then we are restricting ourselves to some Python version. I don't know whether that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Do we want that? That's, do, do we specify a Python version anywhere here? So that's, that's an interesting call. Yeah. <laughs> does the, does the, the optional string work? What is Fireplace? Let's let's go for for optional string for now. They, we, we, they and and someone else needs to take care of the enum thing. I, I haven't I haven't got it yet. Yeah. So shall we check it as done? If, if if no, the test doesn't pass yet. No. Ah, okay. Option is not defined, so I have to. Ooh. Um. Yeah. There's there's one. Or oh, here in the in the back. Sorry. Oh, so from typing import optional. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> what was that? The beep. That was yeah. the beep. Yeah. Ah, yes. okay. So, okay, you can go to the next, the tab uh, next to it and start the turn. Okay, so. We need, we need one more person to me. Okay, data object with first floor and second floor footage. So, write a failing test for creating house with first floor equal to 100. So we go to test validate and we define a new test, mm -hmm. I would say. Uh, I know this is not Windows, I hope this works. Uh, I think you have to do command history. Um. Command. <laughs> no problem. And photosync. So what's the name of the, the, the test? Uh, write a film test for creating house with first floor 100. Who, how should we call the test? Test, ah, uh, okay. Make a suggestion. Uh, test, uh, f create first floor or, yeah. First, first floor 100 or something? Mm -hmm. First floor, let's say. Where's that? Let's go. <laughs> So, yeah, so the, mm -hmm. and that's about the first floor checking. So we have to check, we have to assert that the first floor or 
uh, is 100. But we have to make it fail, as far as understood. Yeah. <laughs> Done. <laughs> yeah. OK. <laughs> Can we mark this as done? Oh. Everybody agrees? <laughs> yes? yoo It is tricky to add it to the house class as it starts with a non-letter character. Yeah. This, we, we can also check this as done. <laughs> In the house class, use pydentic field alias function to give it a valid name. OK. Let's, I, I, I am not familiar with the pydentic, so, uh, so does anyone have an idea how to um, use this field ad alias for first floor? Maybe the driver has an idea. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't ask first. <laughs> so the idea is basically that you can give it a valid name, not starting with a number, and then exactly as you're using it, you can specify an alias, which is the, the name it expects okay. when it imports, so, this, or when it creates this uh, instance. Okay. Just uh, let's say... Like okay. this? Yeah. <laughs> first. <laughs> first. Yeah, perfect before anyone gets any ideas. <laughs> so we can just, exactly, just substitute this. Um, it almost worked. <laughs> yeah. Just a quick hint. You're missing the type annotation, though, for this uh, field still. <laughs> OK, let's, uh, let's take care of it. Um, um, so I don't know how to, um, to, go do, to do that with a field alias, so. Let's say. Can get, uh, okay, Dub double quote, Dub double, or maybe just double, double quote. quote? Sorry? Import, yes. So, yeah, uh, the, yeah, double, just, just, double, uh, what to say? Call? And, and then. First four square meter should be, I'm not sure, it's, is it an integer? Uh, probably float, right? Let's try, yeah. <laughs> so, so we, we have a problem. Name error, name field is not defined. So probably we have to import it. Uh, does anyone know? OK, maybe that from there, yeah. Try, it's identity import field. OK, looks good. We have passed. Okay. okay, great. Thank you. Um, sorry, uh, sorry. I, I, I would like to interrupt this now because I think that you have all now seen how this works. And I would like, before we do smaller groups, I would like to do a little retro review, like talk about how this went. So, and the first questions I have for you is, how did that feel? Maybe, maybe you want to answer. <laughs> you can also put it. <laughs> okay. As a typist. Uh, you can also put it on Slido if you want to say it. Uh, I mean, in the beginning, it felt uh, kind of that we were very small steps um, be because p people have different focus uh, on different topics uh, that it um, was kind of bumpy, but it got faster, I think, in, uh, over time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Christian? So one, one thing that I noticed that is, that is what is very, very strange here in this, uh, in, in, especially in the talking seat, um, is that half of your brain capacity is left for thinking about the code and the other half is, uh, is communicating. And uh, when you program all on your own, you, you don't have that. <laughs> so is, it good or is, it, is it good or is it bad? <laughs> 
So for me, it felt like uh, my hand was forced because we have the task list that we normally don't have. What I noticed is like how important is the driver's role in this? Because I felt like the person uh, on, on the green jacket, like maybe you have done before this, that you were really specific in giving instructions to the group and also ignoring the group if you felt like this is best for you too. And when the, this was not the case, then the whole thing slowed down and went a bit more chaotic. So like this is, if you're more used to it as a group and as a driver, it really helps a lot. Like a good typist makes a difference. Yeah, but also yep. the driver, not the typist. The, 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 yeah. Like the, I, I, I confused you with the words, like the person talking is sometimes called the navigator and the person typing is called the driver. That's, that's the navigator. It's best when, it, if two people know what they're doing, that's best. If at least one person knows what they're doing, that's okay. And if both, like that gets difficult, yeah. Yeah, I think especially if somebody does not know, does not yet know how it works, it's very easy for the others to just say, yeah, do it like this, um, and then just forget that the person might still need some explanation. So that knowledge sharing actually happens, and not just you get working code, but still only one person knows why it works. And so then five minutes later, that person who was typing becomes their talking person. So they, now they have to ask questions. So they're forced to learn in that role. <laughs> Uh, so, something I something I find super important is that you are actually not alone there. Yeah, that uh, it's very very different from, for example, live coding in teaching where you usually know your stuff inside out, uh, but here you don't. So um, this would be super scary being there <laughs> entirely on your own. Yeah, I thought it awesome that we can draw from all the knowledge of all the people. Uh, for example, with these use calls. So normally you would have to switch to the documentation. And yeah, using this method, you not necessarily, you don't have to do it. Ne uh, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, use calls, it has no underscore even. It's from like 10 years ago, find us. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I did this, I think, three times uh, on my own with, uh, with Lev and with a smaller group at an event. And what we are doing here is so far the best solution. Maybe this is because we have such a big audience with such a lot of ideas, which was interesting to me. Yeah. Next question? Yeah, okay, let's go to the next. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn? that we have to learn about Pydantic. <laughs> so I'm, I'm using um, Pydantic at work, and, uh, but this, this field thing I haven't used before. I saw it this mo uh, this somewhere in the morning session from Alex upstairs. Um, I, it was really interesting to see the communication happening. Like sometimes you just like change this and then it's like, no, in the other file. And it's like, no, in the test. And like, it's super nice. Like we can use line numbers or something like that, but we need to be very concise and also calm. Like I think that was, that was cool to see and how it can be improved. Uh, you can post it also on Slido, just so that I can also read that out if you don't want to talk. So this is going to be the last comment, I guess, for this. Uh, yeah, like like the previous person, uh, the communication is exercised very well, um, and um, especially when you're in the driver's seat, um, you you, um, you gotta get away from that. Uh, I do everything my way, but uh, in order to preserve the well feeling in the team, um, to do it our way. So whatever your coding style is or whatever, you have to do it our way. <laughs> so. Yeah, thank you. Like, I see more programming as communication skills training. Like, you have to defend your ideas. You have to disagree with other people's ideas. And I like doing it better when it's live in front of the screen rather than GitHub comments. That's my preference. <laughs> and somehow I learn my teammates better 
when I program with them compared to playing some online games with them. <laughs> That's like, I know how they think, I know how they type, you know, and I, I feel much more connected to them as programmers. <laughs> Are you saying you're working as an actual team? <laughs> Okay, just to plug in, if anyone is tweeting, please hashtag PyCon DE and PyData Berlin. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, I'm very late on Twitter, so, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Is there anything on Slido, or can we cl close the retro? I just uh, want to see if there's anything on Slido. Oh, no. Did anybody put anything on Slido? No, okay. You want to speak? <laughs> I think for a group this large, we need kind of a better tooling for the um, raising hands and stuff. Because I was like sitting here like five minutes, and the mic was somewhere <laughs> right there. And yeah, so it's it's uh, okay in smaller groups, I, I think. But for like, this, you wanted to contribute more fr from the mob. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm sorry about that. We are breaking all the rules here, <laughs> so it's it's kind of hard. But I, I I think it's it worked quite well. So. Yeah. And the best way to talk is to come here and talk for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question, is there a recommended size for, uh, for this ensemble programming? That's a good question. Um, um, the way I usually see it is between three and five people, maybe more. But um, uh, the, the bigger the group gets, also the harder it is to manage. Or to, or to keep in, or to stay in the flow. Actually, I'm surprised how well it worked with this large audience. Uh, I'm really surprised. You are doing really well. <laughs> Can I move to part two? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, it, oh yeah, there's one more hand actually. I don't know, before before we move on. Yeah. Uh, one, one more question regarding to that. So you said about the team size that it's quite limited, but also I would imagine that the time that you're able to actually do that in real life would be limited uh, in terms of that your company allows for that. Can you have like a rough estimation how often you actually get to do that? And also what is your changing interval or do you do the changing also in, in real life with the three to five people and how long would that be? Thank you. I am aware of teams that work exclusively this way, and and for some of them it works out really successful. Um, like co compared to teams who do pair programming exclusively, like in pair programming you have to be active all the time. Maybe it's more intense. In a mob you have sort of have time to lean back maybe, and also also to relax a bit. So maybe it's easier to keep throughout to 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 stay up throughout the day. But also I'm aware of teams that start in the morning. And then in the middle of the day, they split up work on their own. Or maybe they just have uh, scheduled blocks of two to three hours where they do more programming, maybe two or three times a week. So th there are different models. Whatever works for you um, is fine. Yeah, that's a good question. So the question was about the the interval between changing driver and 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 navigator. So um, the thing is, um, you want to you want people to stay engaged. Like let's say if you have a group of five people, and you're rotating every ten minutes, it means that um, it will take a long time for you to to be on a driver's seat again. And you, you don't want to have people wait for so long. And it's, it's hard to keep your attention. Um, so you, it's, it's better to have, in, in, the bigger the mob gets, it's, it's better to have shorter timers. Um, you can go all the way down to two minute rotations. And you can go all the way up to two, 10 and, or 15 minute rotations. Um, and some, for some, some teams, they even, they have a different, um, a different timer for rotating the typist than rotating the uh, talking person. So there are like people experimenting all kinds of ways of do it of doing it, and you. I think again you have to uh, find out what works best in your environment. 
Yeah, I, I think we'll, I want to close the retro now and move on to part two. There'll be more time for questions after the second part. So just Or hold on. you can also write it on Slido and I can pass them yeah. too. <laughs> so part two is small ensembles. So we're gonna split up into 20, maybe 10 ensembles now, which will be small. And we'll be working on the same beautiful pydantic data validation problem in, in them. The one thing that we need for these ensembles to work is facilitators. So I saw some of you raise your hands that you're already familiar with more programming, and maybe you've done it before. So if you, is anybody here willing to facilitate an ensemble for three or four people? I see one hand, two hand, three hands, four. Okay, so we have four facilitators. Um, nice. The <laughs> How do you want to do it? So, how, how do you want to do it? We have four, four facilitators, and and we can we can also fill up, and 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 be two, so we have at least six, and maybe we will find more. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> if there is a change of mind in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a question. Facilitator is the person who makes sure the timer is started when the turn starts. <laughs> it's very easy to forget that. <laughs> but when the beep goes out, people actually switch. That's, that's your job. And if the person who's supposed to be talking starts typing, you tell them, like, no, that's not your role. <laughs> Keep talking. If the typist says, like, no, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do it my way, and starts typing, runaway typist is called. They say, no, 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 <laughs> please, you know, like, <laughs> collaborate with the talker, this kind of thing, just basic housekeeping of the format. Because once you think about the code, speaking human language, then you forget about more programming. <laughs> so it's just, it's just simple housekeeping, of, yeah, like that. And please make sure that people uh, stay nice with each other. And if you, you notice that sort of a discussion is going on and people can't agree, maybe tell them just to try one of those things and stop discussing. Yeah, yeah bias to action, so yeah. we call it. Just try all the things and... So you, even in the small ensembles, the COC applies, the code of conduct. <laughs> so yeah, yeah so like, it's to be specific. Uh, so uh, what's the ideal num number of group? Uh, like the three to five people plus one facilitator. But if you only have uh, six facilitators so far, yeah, it will be like this. If more people want to facilitate, that's even better. Yeah, I hear more people raising their hands to facilitate. Awesome. Yeah. So you, you will need one person's laptop to type it, and there's a GitHub repo in Gitpod, this web-based browser that you can open and set up. So yeah, you have something yeah. to say. So we need you to form groups now, like groups of, of, of three to five people yeah. with at, one, one at least one laptop. So at, at most, one laptop. <laughs> Uh, so <laughs> the facilitators can stand over there so that it's easy to... No. You want to do... Don't know, ask him again if we can move the chairs. Maybe you can stand also. He, he, said, he said no? Yeah, let's see what happens. I think yeah, maybe you can stand. Okay. And we can just then, whenever they sit down, as in the file, when they find out how they want to see it, we, I, we just go from group to group and ask them, okay, who is facilitating? Um, and that's it. And then I don't think we have to do anything. You're all facilitating. Awesome. I'm really happy how it's going. Yeah. This is awesome. So, yeah, they're moving the chairs already. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, Hello. I would like to ask for your attention at the moment. Does every group have a facilitator? Yes. Okay. Cool. So now, the first step is to clone the repo, and you, I want you to choose the right repo. 
The one in pretox is not the right repo. The correct repo is here with this uh, QR code. So don't use the one in pretox. It uses DBT, and you know this is a Python conference. We don't use DBT here. <laughs> uh, can you people hear? Uh, so sorry, there's a quick announcement. So can you please all? Uh, yeah, so please go to this GitHub repo called real estate kata slash real estate pydancing kata. Don't go to TMYLK, anything like this. And click on the button open in Git pod. That will open you the IDE. So. So. Okay, so. I see that some of you already have their Git pod open. So the next step to set up is to set up the mob timer. So I suggest you to go to mobtime.fly.dev. And if, if you go to that website, mobtime.fly.dev, you can create your team. There's some announcement like there. It's just telling some details like you have the repo, right? Yeah. And yeah, the real estate carta. Okay, so la last question before we start. Who needs help setting up the mob timer to add yourselves to your so Raise your hand if you need help with the mob timer. Does facilitator, anyone need help with the mob timer? Facilitator, you're responsible for this timer. That's your main thing. Cool, thank you. Is it side or side? Because... You can use it. Yeah, so just use it for Real estate yeah. card. That's fine. It's like the order might be hard to remember. But, So then, then, then let's, let's encourage them to have a retro and then... Yeah, you want to do the retro yeah, now? Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 So, so I'll, 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 Hello, hello. One uh, note uh, about the timekeeping. Excuse so, me, please. Uh, uh, Adi. So before we go into the break, so... Uh, Adi, 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 give, give me a second. So yeah. this, we have this room until 17.15. This auditorial is here for a while. And you can stay here until that time without a break. That's up to you. Our suggestion is for you to have a small retro now in your small group, and then have a break at 15.35 for 10 minutes with the whole conference. So you can go out of the room and then come back and continue working in your small room in the same space. That's our suggestion. The questions for the retro are, first, how did that feel? And secondly, what did you learn? Have a break. I'm done. <laughs> there are some questions before the break, so there's a retro break. You can check the questions. That's From it? here you can't see, I guess, but. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, just quickly. There's going to be a break at 15.30 until 15.45. You can take the break, or you don't need to take the break. But before you go into the break, uh, I just want to also thank the speakers again, the presenters, because, yeah. And, yeah, and you can come back and continue with your teams. So, and some people are also only for the first one, so they can also leave, yeah. So, thank you.
So, sorry to announce one more. If anyone is attending the social event and they want their wristbands or the the entry ones, please do collect them. Yeah, thank you.